language. All available in less than 60 seconds. Well, we're making progress on that vision. 18 months ago, we launched Kindle. At the time, we had 90,000 books available for Kindle. It was 230,000 books just three months ago when we launched Kindle 2. And I'm excited to tell you that today, we've added another 45,000 books in just the last three months. We're actually accelerating. Where we have Kindle editions, Kindle sales are now 35% of books. And that, uh, that elbow on the curve, the steep acceleration you see there, is coincident with the launch of Kindle 2. We worked on selling physical books, building that business for 14 years. And so for it to get to be 35%, is uh, in, in such a short period of time is really very encouraging for us. So why is it working? Why are people buying electronic books? Well, there are a bunch of reasons. But one is we have the books that people want to read. We're starting from the head of selection and working toward the tail. We're very fortunate because we have tens of millions of customers who buy books from us. And so we know which books people are buying and want to read. There's another reason, too. It's the paper light display. It's readable, bright sunlight. It doesn't cause eye strain. When you look at a backlit display, a traditional computer display, it's like reading while somebody is shining a flashlight in your eyes. All that light being projected into your eyes eventually causes fatigue. The paper-like display doesn't do that. And of course, it sips battery power. There's another reason. It's wireless. And it's 3G wireless, just like you find in an advanced cell phone. With Kindle, you don't need a computer. You don't even have to own a PC. You can buy right off of the device. It makes it very simple. It's a seamless integration. And even though it's 3G wireless, there are no annual contracts, no two-year commitments, no monthly service fees, and never any hunting for Wi-Fi hotspots. You can download books in less than 60 seconds. There's another reason it's working. It's purpose-built for reading. It disappears in your hands. This is the most elegant feature of a physical book. It gets out of the way so that you can enter the author's world. That's a really big deal. And it takes a lot of design effort to make something disappear. It has to be very light so it doesn't cause hand fatigue. It has that electronic paper display so it doesn't cause eye fatigue. Either of those can easily pull you out of the author's world. And there are small things. The device doesn't beep at you. It doesn't get warm in your hands and make your hands sweat. These are real issues that if they existed would make the reading experience less enjoyable. And there's another reason it's working, which is you can carry your whole library with you. 1,500 books. You don't have to make tough decisions about which books you're going to bring on that trip. Bring them all and decide later. Once you can bring your whole library with you, you do start to wonder, what about my personal and professional documents? What are we going to do with those? Well, we all in this room know what we do with them today. We print them out and we lug them around. We put them in our briefcases and our purses and our backpacks. Paperless society never came. In fact, we print more paper now 
than we ever did before. Computer printers have proliferated. And so have their evil companion. The ink toner cartridge. We sell a lot of these. So why do we print? Why do we print so much? Is it because we love changing paper and unjamming the printer and changing the ink cartridges? No. Somehow I always run out of cyan first. No. The reason we still print so much is because computer displays, traditional computer displays, are a worse display device than paper. Paper's just better. It's worth the hassle of printing. Well, Kindle's paper-like display solves that problem. But there's one more thing. Most of the documents that we print and read are eight and a half by 11. The, the information on those documents is structured to be read at eight and a half by 11. There are complex layouts. You can't just reflow these documents, not easily. If you do, you lose the readability of the document. The fact of the matter is, even with electronic paper, you need a big display. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to introduce Kindle DX. Kindle display is two and a half times the size. Kindle DX's display is two and a half times the size of the Kindle display. has a built-in PDF reader, PDF documents, with beautiful on this device. You never have to pan, you never have to zoom, you never have to scroll, you just read the documents. Here's an example of a scientific article from Nature. Newsletter, memo, annual report. If you want to go to widescreen mode, just rotate the device. Your content will change automatically. It's not only personal documents look great on this device. Any highly structured documents, there are many kinds of books, they have complex layouts, and they look terrific here. Here's an example of a cookbook. Molten lava cakes. Lots of structure in cookbooks. Here's another cookbook. Beautiful photo of sushi. It's making me hungry. Look how beautiful that display is. Computer books. Computer codes, computer instruction manuals, all of these books are highly structured, very complex layouts. They really shine with the big Kindle DX display. Travel guides, historical atlases, the list goes on. A particular class of book that shines with this display is textbooks. Well, I'm very excited to announce today, we've reached agreement with three leading textbook publishers that together represent 60% of the higher education textbooks. They are Pearson, Cengage Learning, and Wiley. Here's an example of a calculus textbook on Kindle DX. Here's a chemistry textbook, biology textbook, 
This is such a dream to have textbooks on a device this small. We're going to get students with smaller backpacks, less load, easier access. <coughs> Speaking of the students, we've got the textbooks, we've got the device. What about the students? Well, I'm excited to announce the five top universities have agreed to pilot Kendall DX this fall. Arizona State University, Case Western Reserve, Princeton, Reed College, and University of Virginia. And here to talk to you about that is Barbara Snyder, President of Case Western Reserve. Good morning. We at Case Western Reserve University are proud to be one of the first universities participating in this pilot project, and we thank Amazon for the opportunity. We believe that ebook technology has significant potential to influence the way students approach learning. To be able to have thousands of textbook pages available within a single device opens a new world of educational opportunity, and we look forward to seeing how our students take advantage of it. As a research university, we're bound to test our hypotheses. That's why we put together a formal evaluation project for the Kindle DX at Case Western Reserve University. Specifically, we will examine whether the device changes how students read and take notes. Does it influence the way they work together? Will it affect how they communicate with their professors? I began my career as a faculty member at about the time personal computers were beginning to proliferate on campus. I remember well the questions posed then about how these devices would affect student writing. To all the reporters here, can you imagine what it would be like to craft your story about today's event using a typewriter, with paper, ink ribbons, whiteout? How much difference would, you, would it make for your articles if you couldn't just hit the backspace key to change a word or a sentence? This ebook technology may prove even more transformative. Think about it. All of your textbooks in a single, thin, lightweight device. You can search through them, highlight relevant passages, and electronically exchange documents without a Wi-Fi hotspot. As I prepared for this morning's announcement, I thought back to my own days as a student. I still remember carrying all those heavy books from class to class. I used to say it ruined my posture. Not only will our students enjoy remarkable educational opportunities, they're going to stand taller too. An effort like this one is the product of partnerships, and I want to thank everyone at Amazon who worked so closely with technology leaders in higher education to make sure that this device met academic needs. I also want to commend the other colleges and universities participating with us in this pilot project. I know we will learn a great deal from the experiences of the other campuses. Most of all, I want to thank the students who will be the first to test our ideas. They are the ones who inspire us to think beyond the possible. Thank you very much. So, personal documents, books, textbooks. What about newspapers? Newspapers have been an absolute bestseller on Kindle. People love waking up in the morning to find that their New York Times, their Washington Post, their Wall Street Journal has been automatically delivered overnight. They like the fact that when they travel, their subscription follows them around. Well, we're excited to tell you that this summer, three newspapers have agreed to pilot Kindle DX. We're, we're, they're going to offer Kindle DX for a reduced price in exchange for long-term commitments for subscriptions. 
Those three newspapers are the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Boston Globe. Here to tell you about that, Arthur Sulzberger, chairman of the New York Times. <laughs> Wonderful, and thank you, Jeff. It is a uh, great pleasure to be here today with Amazon, uh, a leader in setting very high standards for online interaction, product availability, and customer satisfaction. Today we take another important step forward in e-reader technology. We at the New York Times Company are delighted to have an opportunity to make use of the Kindle DX and to build on our industry-leading Kindle distribution. And we're also gratified to have the opportunity to work with Amazon on the product side to deliver even more compelling e-reader experiences. And with the Washington Post, we feel we're in very good company. This technology has been through a long process of development. We've known for more than a decade that one day, an e-reader product would offer the same satisfying experience as the reading of a printed newspaper and become an important piece of our distribution of the news and information that defines our excellence. As each new generation of the Kindle came to market, that dream, it was and continues to get closer to realization. The New York Times Company embrace of the Kindle DX is an excellent example of how we are using every available medium to meet the ever-growing demand for high-quality journalism across all platforms, from print to the web, to mobile, to e-reader. This experiment and our entire e-reader collaboration with Amazon demonstrates our commitment to reinvention and to taking full advantage of digital media, which are providing a compelling laboratory for entrepreneurs, for technologists, and of course, for journalists. The new Kindle DX is an important milestone in the convergence between print and digital. It will do an even better job of combining the immediacy of the web with the portability and depth of the newspaper. We know that it will significantly enhance our ability to reach millions of readers, allowing us to have a direct, immediate, and long-term effect on their lives. The issue, as always with new technology, is how can we best use it? The marketing trials we'll be launching this summer will provide useful answers to that question. The New York Times and the Boston Globe will offer the Kindle DX to readers who live in areas where home delivery is not available. In this way, we can begin to offer the quality newspaper experience to everyone who wants it. Ultimately, it is about providing our readers with what they want and need. Access to the Times and the Globe with the news, opinion, and features in all their wonder, whenever and wherever they want it. This effort is just another chapter in our continuing productive relationship with Amazon. So let me say on behalf of popular Times and Globe authors such as Tom Friedman, Dexter Filkins, Dana Kennedy, Helene Cooper, Dan Shaughnessy, Bob Ryan, and David Sanger, thank you, Amazon.com. Thank you, Jeff, for trying so helping to boost their book sales. <laughs> and thank you for making the Kindle DX such a compelling product. I know that Times and Globe readers will really enjoy it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Let's do a quick demo. Let me show you Kindle DX. Outside, after the event, we have Kindle DXs out there set up. So give yourself a demo too. Spend as much time with the device as you'd like. Um, I'm just going to first to show you some examples of the PDF pages that we put together, just to show you how good this built-in PDF reader really is. It's an annual report, an industry report, this one on the digital music market. 
federal filing. This is a, a form 10K for Amazon.com. Here's a, we've had a lot of, uh, since, ever since we launched Kindle, we've had many uh, people from particular industry groups contact us and say, I'd you know, really like to get my industry content onto this device. Uh, here's an example of Pilot's Charts. These are big, thick books that they carry around in the cockpit. Um, go ahead and, uh, and uh, zoom in a bit more just so people can see really close up how beautiful this display is. Newsletter, sheet music. And of course, it's even easier to turn the pages for sheet music when you can use a button instead of to reach around and actually turn the page. Let's go back to home. Here's a, an actual document that you would find in my library. This is a small rocket thruster. I know, I know. And um, it's, uh, this is exactly the kind of document that I would have wasted ink toner on. Print this out, shove it in my briefcase, take it with me when I have time to read it. Um, uh, these documents just look absolutely beautiful. Couldn't zoom in even tighter there. How in the world did you make it backwards? <laughs> but you can see from the Amazon Kindle logo that they've actually somehow managed to make the device turn entirely backwards. Um, yeah, that will not be a feature available. In the um, I assume people are. Uh, Trying to sort out that little snafu. All right, well, wouldn't be a party until something like that happened. But uh, if you ignore, think of yourself as looking at this through a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see even in reverse what this display is. Okay, let's go back to the home page. I'm going to choose to find this hilarious. Let's go ahead and look at the New York Times. Never seen the New York Times backwards before. Excellent. How does it look? All right. Both of them. I'm sorry, I can't make the news any better. But you may just have to do your uh, demos outside. Is the camera uh, seems to be working all right? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I guess it's the projector. Actually, it does look good here. On this little projector, if you guys want to gather around. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think it makes sense to continue with the demo. Um, but uh, you could actually gather around. You guys want to come up on stage and look at this monitor? There are only 200 of you. Come on up. Is it? Because I do want you to see these screens. All right. Um, newspapers. There are multiple ways to read newspapers. I like to flip through all the articles and just sequentially flip through very quickly one after the other. Pakistani army poised for new push into SWAT. Torture memos will not result in prosecutions. Plan to sell Pricer to Fiat clears, to, uh, clears bar. Um, you, can, you can go through that way. You can also go to the sections list. 
and you can go to a particular section. It went down to business day, clicked on business day, it would pull up the first article, and I can flick through the business day section with the five-way controller. Um, I can also uh, go over here for this 23. When I click on 23, it will show me a summary of the 23 articles. So this is the second way that some people like to read newspapers, kind of look at a list of headlines and make their choices and, and go in that way. Uh, it's important, even in this summary approach, that you have multiple lines of text after the headline. As it turns out, the headlines are not written to really allow you to decide whether or not you want to read the story just based on uh, what the words in the headline. They kind of assume that you're also going to glance at the first few lines of the story. And so here you can do that. If you want to come down to uh, job rates rate may be high, but millions are being higher, you can pop into that story. Just try to pick a positive one. You can page through. Okay, I'll show you one more thing. Let's go back to home. It's a good textbook. Here's Biology of Fishes, third edition. And one of the great things about textbooks on Kindle is all the things that you expect from Kindle work for textbooks. So, you know, if read this for students remarkably, the more advanced scombroids, such as the skipjack, bluefin, and yellowfin tunas, so, you know, I might get curious what a scombroid is, and I can bring my cursor over there. And down at the bottom, it'll show you fish of the mackerel family, or one of a larger group that also includes the barracudas and billfishes. You can go in for an even more extensive definition if you'd like. Um, so the uh, other thing that you can do with, uh, what, which I really like to do, and this is a new feature for Kindle DX, is not only can you change the font size, which people love, but you can also decide how many words per line you want, what you want the line length to be. I find I read faster when the line length is shorter. I like a shorter line length. I think it makes it easier for me to track back to the beginning of the next line. So here is, you know, basically the margins have been expanded, the line length made shorter. People read differently, and some people will like longer line lengths, and some people will like shorter line lengths. And so we've made that a user configurable option. Obviously something you can never do with a traditional textbook, just like you could never change the font size of a traditional textbook. All right? And as I said, you'll have an opportunity to play with uh, Kindle yourself outside that after the event. So, let me put this all together for you. Kindle has a 9.7 inch display with auto rotation has 3G wireless access to 275,000 books, 3.3 gigabytes of storage, which lets you carry with you up to 3,500 books, native PDF support, you never have to pan, you never have to zoom, you never have to scroll, and that's a big deal. You never have to reflow the document either. You just read. New York Times bestsellers and most new releases are $9.99. There's no multi-year wireless contract, no monthly service payments. $489. Kindle is now a family. We have our six-inch Kindle for $359. That's shipping now. And we have Kindle DX, $489. While we've been in this room, the detail page has gone live on the Amazon website, so you can pre-order Kindle DX now for shipment this summer. Kindle Vision, every book, ever printed, in any language, all available in less than 60 seconds. And it wouldn't be bad if we could inch our way towards Paperless Society either. Thank you.